Hi everyone, Kenzel here with Little Salem Creations. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Today we're going to be making three beginner hanging plants. A little trio of plants. For your supplies, you're going to need medium weight for yarn. My favorite is Premier Basics. It's great for beginners. I have three different shades of green and a white. I also have a little bit of stuffing, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, and a five millimeter crochet hook. This is a beginner friendly pattern, so it covers everything. How to do the stitches, magic ring, all that good stuff. But if you're struggling, please reach out to me, as well as find other videos on my channel. I try to have a lot of information on my channel so you can find, watch a different tutorial, maybe it makes a little bit more sense there, whatever works for you. Let's start crocheting. To start our plants, we're gonna start with the pots, which I'm using the white yarn for, and we're gonna start with something called a magic ring. Now down below, I also have a video linked of like all the alternatives to magic rings. They're a little tricky right now. So if you're struggling, go ahead and see that video. But I'm going to show you how to do a magic ring here. This is the end of my tail. I'm going to place it in my hand and then wrap around to make an X and then pinch it in the middle. I'm going to go under and then over and we're going to scoop this line underneath. So I'm just going to scoop it through. Then I'm twisting my hook up and I'm going to hold it. I'm holding the wrapped around yarn on my hand and what I just pulled through. And then I pulled my hand out. And then I'm tightening the yarn that's attached to the ball or the skein. And then we're going to do chain one which is where we pull our white yarn through the loop. But don't worry, I wanna show this again, but this is how we're gonna do our magic loop. Magic ring, same thing. So again, I have my tail and I'm gonna wrap around to make an X and hold in the middle. Under and then over and scoop it through. Twist our hook up I'm going to hold it, take out my hand, tighten our loop, and then pull through our working yarn, when our working yarn is the yarn attached to the ball. I'm going to put it on top of my hook and then pull through the loop. And that's a magic ring. Again, if you need alternatives, please see the video down below. Now for round one, we have to do six single crochets, and these are going to be our first actual stitches on it. So I'm going to place my hook underneath the ring or through the middle underneath both of the strands where it kind of doubled over. And we're going to do a single crochet. To do that, we're going to place our yarn on top of our hook and pull through. So that we have two loops on our hook. We're then going to yarn over and pull through both loops and that will be one single crochet. So I'm going to place my hook in the middle, yarn over which is when we place our yarn on top of our hook and pull through and then yarn over again and pull through both of these loops. It might help to turn your hook down so it can slide through without getting stuck. So that was two through the middle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, three, This will be four. Then five. And then six. So we have our six stitches on our magic loop. And this is the super fun part. You're going to take your tail and then pull it. 
and should form this tiny circle. At the end of the circle, we're going to place our stitch marker, which is like this little safety pin looking thing. I'm going to place it in the last stitch I made. So on our stitches, you're going to see these little V's, and each of these little V's or ovals is a stitch. So this is six, five, four, three, two, and then one. For round two, we're going to be doing six increases. And an increase is just two of those single crochets, but in the same spot. So at the end of this round, we had six single crochets. At the end of round two, we'll have 12, because we're placing two in each one. The first one's going to be a little hard, it's going to be a little tight, but we're just going to take it slow and wiggle through. So I'm going to insert my hook underneath the very first stitch that we made. And again, it's a little tight, so I'm going to go twist, 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 stick it in. Make sure you're going under both of the loops, the whole stitch. And then we'll place a single crochet. That's one single crochet. To make an increase, we'll place our second in the same spot, in that same first stitch. So we're placing it right next to it. And that's our increase. So again, now we're moving. Um, if you are right-handed, you're moving counterclockwise. Left-handed, you're moving clockwise. I'm inserting my hook into the next stitch. And going to do two single crochets. One. And then two. And then again, into the next stitch. One. Two. Moving right around. And two more. Got a little piece of cat hair. There we go. And then we have one more stitch, but this is our stitch marker. So I'm going to take this guy out so he's not in the way. And then do our increase. Just like that. And if you count them, those little V's, you should have 12. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in so I know where I am. Because when you're working in a spiral, you can't always tell which stitch was your last one, so this helps keep track of each round. For our next round, we're going to be doing single crochets and increases. So it says one single crochet, comma, increase. And that's what we're going to repeat. So that means in the next stitch, we're going to do one single crochet, And then in the next stitch, we're going to do that increase. The comma means you're moving over to the next stitch. So it's one and then a double. And so it's like a total of three stitches in two, if that makes sense. And we're gonna repeat this for the round. So one, Moving over our increase. One. And then the next one, an increase. And then one. And then the increase. I'm just gonna keep on doing this all the way around. If 
If this video is going a little too fast for you, don't forget you can pause, but also you can change the setting of how fast this plays back um, with the playback feature um, and slow it down if that's a little easier for you. So I took out my stitch marker, did my last sequence, which is one, and then increase. Now our circle's getting a little bigger. Putting my marker back in, get myself some more yarn. There we go. For the next round, it says single crochet two and then increase, which means we're going to do one, one, and then our increase. The single crochet two means you're putting it into two separate stitches, so not an increase. So I'm going to do one, and then insert into the next one. So one, one, and then increase. And then we're going to repeat that. You'll find a lot of my beginner patterns or kits and video tutorials are pretty repetitive. And that's because I want you to focus on the stitches and not exactly the outcome. Of course, it's your first project or one of your first few. It's going to be a little messy. It's going to be a little difficult, but I promise just keep working at it. Take it slow and you'll figure it out. You'll have some beautiful crocheted pieces at the end. I've been crocheting for about eight years. It's taken me a while, especially when I did my first stuffed animal or Amy Groomy. It was ugly, guys. It was so ugly. Um, so just keep on working. Be patient with yourself and learning something new. Sometimes that's really hard. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, it's so much easier to help you when you send me pictures or videos of what you're struggling with. And I'm able to specifically address what you need. So please reach out. Don't just sit there and struggle. I'm here to help. I'm in my last one. And I have some tangled yarn back there. One. Two. Taking out the marker. And then increase. And there's our bottom of our base. The next round's gonna be a little different. We're gonna do something called crocheting in the back loop only. So normally when we've been making our stitches, we've been going under both loops of the stitch, the front and the back. For the next round, we're just gonna be going in the back. And we're gonna place one single crochet in every back loop. So again, this is what we normally do. Now we're just going in the back. And making our single crochets in the back and in the back and I'm going to do this for the whole round That was the end of the round with the back loops. As you can see, it kind of pushes our piece out and it's gonna give us this like nice smooth bottom edge, which you'll be able to see a little bit more as we get a little taller. This is the string from our magic ring. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're working that on the inside and you're pushing your stitches from the outside, not the inside, which would look like this. This should be away from you. The next five rounds, we're going to be placing one single crochet in every stitch, not in the back loop, through both loops. So again, going through both loops, you'll place a single crochet and do that in every single stitch. Work this around. Don't forget to move your stitch marker up and you're gonna do this for a total of five rounds. I just finished round five, so my pot's a little taller. You're starting to see it actually looks like a pot. 
I just took out my stitch marker and to kind of finish off our piece, we're gonna do something called slip stitch, which is smaller than a single crochet. So in the next stitch, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. And that's just making our top edges a little smoother so they run, run into each other. Then I'm gonna cut off about a foot of yarn. I always cut extra, makes it easier. So now my piece is separated from the skein or ball. I'm gonna pull through. I literally just kept on pulling my loop so I don't have a loop anymore. And this is the end of our pot. You're gonna be wanting to make three of these, um, one for each of your little plants that we're gonna make. To add a little bit more details to it so it's not just plain white, I'm gonna add some embroidery on the edges. I cut off a piece of green. It's like three feet, which is like crazy long. You don't need it that long. It just, it's just easier for me to cut long. I'm gonna put it on my tapestry needle. Pull through. And if you have any sort of embroidering techniques or skills, we're gonna be doing the same thing. And if you don't, it's really simple. Starting from the inside, I'm gonna poke through wherever I want my design to start. I'm gonna pull majority of it through, leave a few inches. If you want, you can tie it to the tail in the middle, not the one on the outer edge, the one from your magic ring. Tie a loose knot don't pull too tight because it will bend your pot. And that way it just won't come undone. You can even trim those if they're getting in your way. I think for this one, I'm just going to do little V's. And there's about 500 different ways to do this. I do not do it the most efficient way. You might want to. I don't know. This is your design, so you can do it however you want. But I'm literally just going around and I'm stitching this little design in the pots. I'm making sure not to pull too tight because I really don't want my pot losing its shape. but I'm gonna go around and keep on adding these Vs. Once I get to the end, ooh, to the end, excuse me, I'm gonna tie it to my original tail and trim. You might notice as you're coming around, your lines are not adding up and it's not supposed to. When we did our pot, we worked in a spiral, so our rows are slowly going up in a spiral shape, so it's not gonna line up. That's okay. We are just going to shift this down a little bit as we get closer to the edge. Whoa, that was my bottom, now I'm on my top. We'll start slowly moving down so that it lines up. Just like that. And again, my embroidery is not perfect by any means. I like them looking a little different, a little creative, but you can do it however you want. See, my points are a little bigger over here. It's okay. It's just my little plant and it's gonna be cute. On the inside, I'm gonna tie it together, again, loosely, so you don't wanna bend your pot. And let's trim it to get it out of the way. And now we have our pot. You're gonna make two other pots, add an embroidery design, do different greens, totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. So now that we have the pot, we need to make the little bit of grass or dirt that goes inside before we make all the leaves. And we're, I'm doing mine in green because I wanted it to kind of match the leaves that come out. Technically, you can do it in brown if you have your own. But for the kids, I did green, just so it kind of blends in together. We're gonna to be doing the exact same thing as this bottom piece. 
which is easy peasy because you've already done it. With my yarn, we're going to do another magic ring. I'm going to make that X and hold. And remember, you can go back to the beginning of the video if you need to. I'm gonna go under, over, pull it through, take out the hand, tighten, and chain one. Then we're gonna place our six single crochets in the circle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And tighten. That was round one. Put my stitch marker in. And now I'm going to do an increase six times. And again, our increase is two single crochets in one. One, two, that was one increase. And then I'll go around doing the rest so that our six single crochets become 12. Last one, taking out the stitch marker. And putting it back in. Next round, one single crochet and then an increase. So one, and then moving to the next stitch, increase. one and then an increase and again I know I'm going a little bit fast here please go back to the beginning of the video with the pot because um, we we're doing the exact same beginner steps so if you're like you're going too fast Kendall that's okay let's go back if you are following from one of my beginner crochet kits there's also the PDF pattern included with your kit that is underneath the video link I like to print mine out and kind of follow along, make sure I know where I am, what I'm doing. It will also get you more familiar with reading crochet in the language and what a pattern looks like and kind of piecing it together with the video. For our last round, we're going to be doing two single crochets and then an increase. One. Two, and then an increase. There we go. One, two, increase. to increase one two increase one two take out the marker and increase don't need my marker anymore because I'm finished. See, this is gonna fit right on the inside with a little bit of stuffing, which is exactly what we want. Grab my scissors. You don't need a long tail because we're not gonna do anything with it besides hide it. You don't want it too short because then it falls off. So let's leave a few inches, but we're not gonna be sewing with it or anything. You're gonna be making 
one of each of these bases um, in each of the three colors. For plant number one, um, if you're again, if you're following from a kit, it doesn't matter what colors you choose, you get the same amount of yarn for all three of the greens. So it's not like a certain one that needs to go for a certain whatever. No, whatever color you want for whatever design you like for it, go for it. You can also repeat the designs if you like one of them a lot more instead. And again, follow that PDF pattern for more up close pictures so you can match the colors if you want. For this one, I'm going to be making chains. So chains are super fun and a lot of people who say, I started crocheting and I know how to make chains and nothing else, you're gonna love this. <laughs> We're gonna start with a slip knot by twisting and pulling. If you just make knots normally outside of crochet, yep, it's exactly the same way. I have my tail, I'm twisting and pulling through. So I got a loop, putting my hook on it and tightening. You don't want it super duper tight, but you don't want it falling off either. We are then going to chain 12. And to do a chain, you're gonna be placing the yarn on top of the hook called a yarn over and pulling through. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we get this nice little, little worm looking guy. I want to trim it or fasten off, excuse me. Pull my hook through, and I like to tighten both ends just to make sure it doesn't come undone. You're going to be making 10 of these, but you'll have some extra yarn, so feel free to add more if you'd like. But for the example, I'm just going to make 10. I made all 10 of my leaves. I'm just tightening them now. It's kind of a mess of tails, but don't worry, we're going to clean it up in just a moment. And we're just doing this so the um, knots are nice and secure, not for any other reason. I want to take my base. This is the back side, which has the magic ring tail, and these are nice, clean, pretty stitches. So from the back side, I'm going to stick my hook through, and I'm going to pull one tail through the base. And I'm going to do this with all 10. And I'm just spreading them out relatively evenly, um, just so it looks nice and full. Again, you do have extra yarn if you're following from the crochet kits. Feel free to do that. You want to make sure it looks exactly like how you want, which is like the best part about crocheting your own pieces. You can customize it, even as a beginner. I'm pulling my last through last few through there we go try not to pull too tight just because i don't want it coming all the way through but we can fix that in a moment as well two more and yes it's looking like a mess but it comes together in the end i promise Let's see where i need another one mm, like right here yeah that'll be my last one Okay, on this crazy backside, kind of separating it, a little jellyfish so it's nice and clean, a little easier to work with, you're going to tie all of the knots together. And by that, I mean, we're gonna start with two, we do a square knot. I'm gonna take one of these, one of the strings from the original two and tie it to the next one. See, that one's kind of pulling through. Let's go fix it. There we go. And then take one, go to the next. I'm going to do this with all of them so it's all one piece and it's all nice and secured. Ha! 
I start from one side and kind of go around just because I don't want to miss any, but also we're going to be testing that in a while. And sometimes I kind of pull my knot through another one, like it's making a mess, they're not nice and clean. That's totally okay. We're going to trim these in just a moment so it's out of the way as soon as I get them all. Okay, I'm going to test it by lightly tugging on all of these. Oh, I think I got them all. Woohoo! On the back side, I'm going to leave about an inch and trim. You can use this extra yarn for stuffing if you'd like, or just throw it away. Then these guys, I'm going to trim as well leaving, I don't know, was that a quarter of an inch, half an inch? Just so it's more clean and you can see our beautiful chains that we made. It's like giving it a little haircut. I don't have a bonsai tree, but I imagine it feels something similar to this. It's very therapeutic. Woo, again, stuffing or later. We have a plant. Let's sew it on. I need to grab my tapestry needle again. I want to put the white tail from the pot on my needle. And I'm going to place this right inside. There's a hundred different ways to sew pieces on. I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter. I want to show you my technique. Do what works for you. As long as it stays put, who cares? Starting from the outside, starting from white, I'm going through both loops and then into the front loop of the green. When I come back, I'm skipping green and going through the same two loops of white. Again, through both white, through one green, and then back down through white only. This is how I figured out makes my work really clean, but I've been known to switch it up, do what works for me. Um, kind of depends on the pattern too. This technique does not work for everything. As you can see, it's nice and clean, as long as you don't pull too tight, because if you do, your green will poke out of your white, and no one wants that. So I'm gonna go around to about three quarters of the way around so I can stuff it. The way around, I have this little little opening. I'm gonna take my stuffing, not that much, pull it apart into small clumps and place it inside. That's really the trick to stuffing, small clumps, not just one big blob, um, cause that won't make your piece nice and fluffy. And this way you get to like control the shape and where you want it. Some more stuffing. It doesn't have to be crazy considering this is like a little hanging plant. I put them in like my uh, rear view mirror of my car, put in like a door handle or something, hang them in a window. It doesn't have to be incredibly fluffy, but you want it to look like a little pot. Oh, and it does. Yay. I want to go around and finish sewing. I'm just about there. My green poked out a little bit and that's okay. Now that I'm at the end, you don't just want to cut off this white yarn. It's going to fall through. You want to poke it down through the white. Don't pull too tight because you don't want it to go like that. And you're going to trim it right close to the base. You can like poke it in, kind of rub it, 
poke it with your scissors to go through. It's just about done. Except this guy. Now this was from our original base circle. When I was sewing, I should have tucked it inside and continued to sew, but I kind of forgot and that's okay. Because this is so short, I can't do what I just did with white. So I'm gonna stick my, my um, tapestry needle in. I'm like as close to this base as I can be. I'm gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna poke through my needle all the way. So now it's gone and we have a little plant, but it needs to hang. So you can either hang it in white or the greens. I went back and forth about what color I should do. I think I'm gonna stick with white. I don't know. You tell me what color combinations you did. But if I find the end, there we go, of my yarn. I'm cutting some pretty long pieces just because I like having some room to work with. This is one piece, it's like two feet long. Yes, I know I'm close to the camera so you can't see that, I, I get it. I'll even show you in just a second. I'm gonna cut three. One, two, three. See, pretty long, doesn't really matter. Make all your pots first or all like crochet all the pieces and then you know how much extra yarn you have. So that could help too. Mm, I don't really think there's a front and back on this one. My design's pretty even. I'm gonna take my cord. It's just my white yarn, but I'm gonna call it a cord. I'm gonna fold it in half. And then wherever I decide my three points are gonna be, I'm gonna stick my hook through the pot And I'm going to pull the white through and then pull it through the loop. Just like that. And then I'll repeat with the other two so it's like a third and it hangs evenly. I like going from the inside versus the outside, but that's total preference. Take my second piece, fold it in half. through the loop. Okay, one, two, and then third one's gonna go right here. Making sure it's even, so when it hangs, it's nice and balanced. Fold my last piece in half, and then hook it on. I wanna zoom this out a little bit. You're gonna see my a little bit of my messy desk. That's okay. I'm gonna decide how long I want it. I think to here. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. I have all three strings together. I'm going to tie a knot. I changed my mind before I do that. I'm gonna add some decorative knots. I was gonna do it after, but then I realized I couldn't. So on each string, you can add some decorative knots. It will make your string a little shorter so keep that in mind. I think I'm just gonna do one on each one. You know, it's like those little like macrame pots. You know, you know what I'm talking about? This is what that was kind of based off of. I'm trying to make it a little even. Even though I I used to make plants like these very similar when I sold physical plushes instead of just kits and patterns. And they used to sell like hotcakes, so I made like so many of them. I never mastered making the knots even, which is kind of embarrassing because I've, I've made probably a hundred. I'm gonna make it nice and even, go to the top and tie my knot. I'm gonna pull as tight as I can on this knot. And then I'm gonna trim. If you're scared about it coming off, you can put a little bit of glue, fabric glue, um, that kind of just holds it in place, but my knot is tight. And here's plant one. I want to show you how to do the leaves for plant two and plant three, but sewing it, attaching the strings, 
putting the plants onto the base, it's all the same. But now we have one plant done. For plant two, you're gonna make five chains of 26 each. So there's 26 chains, you're gonna make five of these. And then we're gonna place three knots along the edge. So we'll make one knot, not quite at like the end point, but you know, I want them kind of spread out, kind of gives it a little bit more texture. Reminds me of a string of pearls. Two, and then three. We'll make five of these and then you'll attach them just like you did for this fine plant. For the third plant, it's designed to look more like a little succulent. I made my slip knot. We're going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now we're actually going to be crocheting on the chains, which is super fun. So we're going to skip this chain we just made, the one that's like right next to your hook, number 10. Ignore him, he's gone. We're going to be working in the next nine. Technically, there are three bumps on this, on a chain. And it technically matters which one you put your hook into. As a beginner, for something this small, it doesn't matter. Ignore them. We're going to place our hook onto the chain. So we're skipping 10, this is nine, place it through. And we're going to make three single crochets in the same spot. So one, insert again, two, and three. I need some more yarn, I'm a little tangled. There we go. Moving on to the next chain, you're going to single crochet three again. You're going to try not to skip any of the nine, but we're going to place three single crochets into every chain. That's two. This is going to create like a really small spiral that we're then going to sew together to make it look like a little succulent. So I'm placing three single crochets on each one. Two three, and then to the next one. If you're struggling to put your hook into your chains, go ahead and restart your chains, but don't pull as tight when you're making them. That might be your issue. Tension something that comes with time with crochet, but it can be a little frustrating in the beginning to make sure all your, everything's even. It takes time, so don't worry. Going in my last one, I might have skipped one and that's okay. We just want to catch as many as you can. But sometimes because we're putting three stitches in each one, sometimes they're kind of close together. It's hard to see. That's okay. I purposely designed my beginner patterns that if there are mistakes, it's totally fine. You're still going to get a very similar outcome. With our little curly cue, I'm going to cut the tail and pull through. I'll put that tail on my needle. And I'm going to wrap this guy up. So he's like a little tiny succulent, a little tiny rose. As I hold it, I'm going to sew through the layers so he stays in place. I'm kind of going to push the middle out some so it kind of looks like three-dimensional so my spiral doesn't lay flat. You can go through as many times as you need to if you want to do like the middle first and then the outer edges, whatever. I'm kind of moving mine differently every time just so it doesn't lay flat because that's my biggest goal here. I'm kind of pushing it out. Where am I? Here. Let's put those together. And I mentioned earlier, 100 different ways to sew. 100 different ways to sew. It doesn't matter.
We have this little tiny spiral, little succulent. If you have eyeshadow, like a purple or a black, you can actually paint the outside edges with eyeshadow. It kind of gives it a more realistic look. But this is how we made our succulent. You're gonna sew that to your base. Do so you have like a little tiny one? You can also make it bigger if you want. I like mine tiny. And that's how you make all three plants. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a blast making this little trio of plants. If you have any questions, especially if you're coming from a beginner crochet kit, please don't struggle. Please reach out to me. I'd love to help you make sure you figure it all out. Um, also, if you comment, I see a majority of them, but if you want to like make sure I see it, please email me. It makes it way easier. If you like this tutorial, please like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel so I can provide more tutorials for everyone. You can also follow me on social media at Lousy Llama Creations. We're big on TikTok, um, so that's where you're going to see new releases, restock information, all that good stuff. Again, my name is Kendall, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!